So just so you guys know, last time I was here, I was married to one wife. I'm still married to one wife. And we get two beautiful daughters, Jasmine, and she's turning six in August, and also Amelia. And she just turned three years of age. And I was here, I think, in the month of July in 2018. And in the month of September in 2018, we planted a church in Green, Ohio. And so we felt... Uh, for us as a family and a ministry that God said, it's time for you to stop just going overseas and blessing the nations. But I called you as a missionary to this nation. I want you to bless the United States of America. And so we felt in our hearts that we want to plant in our city. We want to invest in a hometown. And so we planted a church that is called Identity Church. And it's been a great blessing and many challenges, of course, along the way. But God's grace has been sufficient for us in this season. We have seen a tremendous growth, but also we have seen the kingdom of God advance in our city. I love uh, to be able to invest in our, in our home community and family because, you know, when you get to travel, you get to bless people. It's one thing to bless people. But I think when you come to my age, I'm 37. I don't know. Some of you might think I'm old. Some of you might think I'm still young. But when you come to my age, you, you're tired of just blessing. Are you with me? We love blessing people. But I think... You have to also build the kingdom of God. So Jesus didn't say upon, you know, this rock, I will bless my church. He said upon this rock, I will build my church. So we want to be able to see the body of Christ build in the city that we are. And so what I love about the body of Christ, that it comes in many different expressions. It comes in many different, you know, ways and DNAs. And, and at our house, in our Denny church, we are just like you guys. We are a diverse community of God chasers who love the presence of Jesus. Amen? Ain't that easy just to love Jesus, to love God and love one another? If we could just maintain those two principles, Christianity would be very easy. And so we have purpose within our hearts that we're going to love God and we want to love people around us. And so for this morning, I don't want to take much time. You know, on the 9th of June, we celebrated the day of Pentecost. You guys had a good Pentecost service? And you guys know that the Pentecost is not over. Amen? We have Pentecost every single day because the Holy Spirit is with us. Uh, but I felt in my heart, I want to not so much preach a message because I think you are getting great messages in this church. And quickly, if I don't shake your hand, it's because I had a surgery on Friday. That's why I sneaked in quickly with Wanda and just sat down because I don't want to explain to every single person that I had a surgery. I want to just make an announcement. If I do not grab your hand, do not be offended. Amen? I just have a surgery on Friday. I have a couple of pins removed from my right hand. And so I can be able to lift my daughters properly. And so if I don't shake your hand, it means I just, I'm in a little bit pain. But God has given me grace. And, uh, but I want to share on the Holy Spirit today. Uh, because I believe with all of my heart... That in the body of Christ, we know much about the Holy Spirit. But one of the problems that we have is that we know the terminologies of the Holy Spirit. We do not understand the reality of the Holy Spirit. And most of us in the body of Christ, especially for the younger generation, either we are afraid of Him or we think that He is just some kind of manifestation. Now, I believe with all of my heart that according to the first Corinthians chapter 12, that in verse 3 that he says that a manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. So I believe in the manifestation of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We want to see the ninefold manifestation of the Spirit of God in our midst. But I believe that he is much more than that. And if you encounter the reality of the Holy Spirit, you will start to develop an intimate relationship with him. And so this morning I want to kind of share my journey in how I came into that personal relationship with the Holy Spirit. Now, for those who were here last time when I was preaching in the month of July in 2018, uh, you heard my testimony. And for those who did not hear my testimony, I was born in a Muslim nation. I was born in Iran. Uh, we escaped from Iran when I was six. Uh, arrived in Sweden when I was at the age of seven. And we were Muslims. My mom did not have a relationship with God. But in 96, she encountered Jesus. And so my mom, through a vision, at the day of Pentecost, actually, in 96, she got totally born again. 
she came home and she spoke to us about Jesus. I was the age of 13 years of age. And, uh, you know, I got born again when I was 22. And, of course, my mom prayed for me for many years. And I surrendered my life to Jesus at the age of 22. Now, you got to understand, on the 26th of September in 2004, I was at a pastor's conference in Armenia. How many of you know what Armenia is? Have you heard about Mount Ararat? When Noah's Ark rested, you probably read in the book of Genesis. Amen? So that part of that mountain is in a nation called Armenia. And so that's the nation that I get born again in. And so in this pastoral conference, I get born again because a prophet who was there from Kenya, I was standing in the back of the building and he said, the Holy Spirit is in that building. And I never forget on that day when I cried out to God and I said, God, I'm asking you for the Holy Spirit and I want you to give me your presence and power. That day I get born again. That day I get delivered from all of my addictions. Now you got to understand that nobody laid hands on me. Nobody gave me a teaching. Nobody jump started me like say after me. Now, if you had the Holy Spirit and you spoke in tongues like that, praise God. Amen. Because we believe with all of our heart, everything that we have in the faith, it has to be received through our faith. It comes through the faith which we have in Jesus Christ. So I spoke in tongues. I was filled with the Spirit of God. I was delivered from my addictions. I came home and I was on fire for Jesus. This was about 15 years ago. So I operated in the gifts of the Holy Spirit. I was all the winning the lost. I was bearing witness to Jesus because you got to understand that in Acts chapter 1, when Jesus said, when the Holy Spirit shall come upon you, he didn't say, you shall speak in tongues. Are you with me? Even though I love speaking in tongues, and just as Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 18, that I thank my God that I speak in tongues more than all of you. So we know that speaking in tongues is important because when you do speak in tongues, you build yourself up in the most holy faith. So you better speak in tongues. Amen? Some people ask me, say, Kevin, do I have to speak in tongues? I said, no, you don't have to. But if it's in the Bible, why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you want to have everything that God has for you? You don't have to. You're going to make the rapture. Amen? But if you can have a tool from the Holy Spirit to build yourself up in your most holy faith, why would you argue about that manifestation rather than talking it? But Jesus did not say that when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you shall prophesy. Now, do we prophesy when He comes upon us? 100%. Do we pray for the sick? Yes. But one of the ultimate signs that the Spirit of God has come upon a person is that He said, you shall be my Come on, talk to me. You shall be my? In Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, to the ends of the world. So I know people that do not speak in tongues, that they do not prophesy, but they have become witnesses unto Jesus Christ. So we know the ultimate sign is that we should be a witness for Jesus. And so when I'm talking about the Holy Spirit, I'm not here to establish a theological argument. Amen? If you want to argue theology, I am not a theologian. Argue with Pastor Bobby, please. <laughs> and do it when I'm gone. <laughs> not when I'm here. Because in the end of the day, I have a lot of people arguing theology with me. But in the, I, I said, I say, do you know the reality of the Holy Spirit? Have you encountered the person of the Holy Spirit? Because if you encounter the person of the Holy Spirit, you will not argue about Him. You want to have everything that He has because you understand that when He empowers your life, it's not an argument, but it's a manifestation of the power of God. Because you have become a witness unto His name. And so when I got born again in 2004, I was speaking in tongues. I was praying for the sick. I saw miracles and signs and wonders following my preachings. People were seeing visions after I spoke to them. Muslims were having dreams. We saw many people saved and born again in my home, you know, uh, city. And it was not because of my own perfection or my own excellence. It was because God had anointed a vessel. And I believe it is the only thing that can destroy the yoke. It is not our excellence or speech. It is the power of the Holy Spirit. Are you with me? So that is what happened at the day of Pentecost. He said, 
that my power will not rest upon just the priests, the prophets, or the kings, or the chosen vessels, but upon all flesh. Your sons and daughters, they shall prophesy. Your young men would see visions on that day, and your old would dream dreams. It was the fulfillment of Joel 2.28. But you got to understand that when I got born again, I knew there was something more than just prophecy. I knew there was something more than just speaking in tongues. Even though I love to operate in the gifts of the Spirit, I was hungry for a person. And i never forget when I was in South Africa in 2006. This was two years after my Christian faith. An intercessor came up to me. And she pointed her... <laughs> bony little finger at me. Have you, have you met those people sometimes? They just scare the life out of you. And she looked at me. She said, young man, you better come here because I'm going to talk to you. Just the way she spoke to me. And I got it because I knew she had a reputation of being one of those ladies who could hear from God. I was just born again for two years. And, you know, I love praying. I, I knew that for I love living holy. I have given up stealing and being a drug addict. I have given up lying. But this lady saw something in my life. And she picked me out out of the crowd and said, I want to talk to you. So she took me to her prayer closet. She was standing on that side of the room and I was standing here because I didn't want to go close in case. Ow, no. So you don't want those ladies to grab hold of you. I'm telling you, they're going to cast the demon out of you. So I was standing there and she kind of looked at me and, and she said, young man, and I'll never forget this. Young man, do you want to know the heart of your father? I said, yes. And she opened up the Bible to 1 Corinthians chapter 2. And she read to me what Paul said. That no one knows what is inside of a man except the spirit that is of a man. And no one knows what is in the deep things of the heart of God except the spirit which is of God. Have you ever read the Bible religiously so many times and then suddenly you read it and it's like God takes a sledgehammer and slap it on your face? It's called the Word became flesh. Amen? So the Word, when I read it, it was like Rhema. It just hit me like a hammer. And when that happened, I knew that if I wanted to know, not just the gifts of God, but the heart of God. What moves God? What grieves God? If I wanted to know the nature and the character of God, what quenches His Spirit? If I just don't want to know His acts, but I want to know the ways of God, I got to get to know this person. And His name is the Holy Spirit. So what did I do? I do what a great student would do. I went back to the Bible. Are you, are you guys okay? I'm just sharing stories this morning. Are you guys okay with that? Or do I have to read a couple of scriptures first? Good. Okay. So, I just read through the Bible from the book of Genesis to the book of Revelation. And I consumed every place you saw this word, the Holy Spirit. And I saw in Genesis how the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. I discovered that at the creation of man that God said, let us, come on, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And I saw how the Holy Spirit did not just come at the day of Pentecost. And yes, His empowerment came. But that precious person of the Holy Spirit was right there at the beginning of the creation of the world. And how He was involved in the creation of man. And how He was the one who empowered every single person who walked and made history with God. And I discovered that He was the cloud by day and fire by night who guided Israel in the wilderness. And I discovered that he was the power of God that literally brought Israel out of captivity with plagues and signs and wonders. And I discovered that every man that made history with God, he was anointed, empowered by a precious spirit. And his name is the Holy Spirit. And I never forget one day I was sitting outside. She is my wife today, but back then she was not my wife. So what I did was that I used to sit outside her bedroom. Now listen, I was in Bible school, and in Bible school we were not allowed to date. So what I did was that because I was not allowed to date, I was sitting outside the room every single day just to, you know, catch a glimpse. I know you guys have never done that. It's only in Iran we, we try to catch a glimpse of the person that we like. But where I come from, I was sitting there and I was looking at her every single, I said, man, what a beauty. I was, I want to marry this girl. 
But of course, I did not go to Africa to get a wife. I went there for Jesus. Amen? But God had a surprise for me. But I was sitting there one day when I was 18 years of age. Now, going backward for six years. When I was 18 years of age, my mom, for my 18th year birthday, when all of my friends was getting this amazing gifts, because it is a great birthday, she gave me a Bible, which was not a good idea. Because I was a drug addict and a drug dealer, and she gave me a Bible. I thought she's going to give me a gold chain, or she's going to give me a car. Because that's what my brothers get. They get all these amazing things, and she gave me a Bible. Because she said, there's a calling upon your life, and I want to give you a Bible. And she gave me a book, and on the book it said, good morning, Holy Spirit. Have, have, you, know, you, know, you know the guy with a white suit? Have you, you remember him? So, and I looked at the book, and I thought, I'm like, who is this guy? I mean, and, and, and this book, Good Morning, who is the Holy, what is the Holy Spirit? I didn't know, never been to church during that time of my life. Not even once at the age, age of 18 I've been to church. So I opened up the bi this book, I didn't touch the Bible, and I saw how Pastor Benny Hinn was in Pennsylvania, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, standing outside a small traditional church for seven hours, Waiting to go into a service with a woman who is a minister by the name of Captain Kuhlman. Have you guys heard about Captain Kuhlman? And how the presence of God touched his life at the age of 19. And how he felt the electricity of the presence of Jesus going through his body. Now listen to me. Do not stumble over a man, over his suit, or the way he dresses, or over his showmanship. Are you with me? I'm just talking about a person. His name is the Holy Spirit. And so... I was thinking when I was sitting there in South Africa, six years now forward, that book was in my shelf in Sweden. I'm in South Africa and I'm thinking, waiting for Mariella, I wish I had that book. And as I thought about it, I wish I had that book. God is my witness. I looked to my left and the book was right there. Just right there. I took the book and I consumed the book. I read the book, Good Morning Holy Spirit. And as I read this book, Good Morning Holy Spirit, only two years born again, I saw that there is more than just the terminology of the kingdom. I discovered there is a reality that many people in the church, we talk about it, we speak it, we prophesy it, but we have not discovered it yet because we have not encountered the reality of the Holy Spirit. Are you with me? And I saw how Pastor Benny Hinn used to spend time at the age of 19 for 8 to 18 hours in the presence of his new friend, the Holy Spirit. And I read stories of Captain Kuhlman who walked in the presence and the dimension of God in such a way that when she walked into a service, people would get healed in their seats. People did not come forward to get laid hands on them. They came forward to testify that the glory of God had touched them in their seats wheelchairs people being coming out of wheelchairs and cancers and stomach disorders and i mean five stage cancers all kinds of chronic sicknesses being healed why because the holy spirit had entered into the room and i truly understood god this is not by man's power or strategy of excellence of speech this must be by your spirit so i knew that i needed to have more than just terminology of the kingdom I knew, yes, I speak in tongues, but I got to encounter this person, the Holy Spirit. And as I studied revival, I discovered one thing in common that every man and woman of God that did history with God had is that all of them had a prayer life. And I want to tell this to a new generation. If you don't pray, you're not going to last. I'm going to say this again. I don't care how many likes you have on social media. I don't care about any of those things. If you are not anointed by the Spirit of God, you are not going to destroy the yokes of the enemy. You can use your talents. You can become famous overnight. But in the end of the day, you want to be able to set the captives free because the Spirit of the Sovereign Lord God is upon me for He has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. It is the anointing of the Holy Spirit that will set the captives free. Come on. Do you believe that? And so I said, God, I need to be anointed by you. Holy Spirit, you have to visit my life in the same way you visited Benny Hinn or Captain Kuhlman. Because I believe apart from the blood of Jesus, we have nothing. 
the reason they are great, the reason you use John Wesley or Charles Finney, all those men and women of God is because they had the same nature like you and I and they had your precious blood. God, I'm hungry for your presence. I want to tell you in the body of Christ, we have appetite for so many things, but we don't longer have appetite for the glory of God. I'm looking for that day when we come together corporately like this and all of us are crying out for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. But it's not just the man and the woman behind the pulpit that are crying out like John the Baptist, but we have a whole generation who have caught the fire of the Holy Spirit. That is the day that we are looking for. And so I knew that if I wanted to have an encounter, I have to stop saying that praying is a law. I have to say that praying is a grace. And I knew that I have to seek God with all of my heart. Because if you don't seek God with all of your heart, you cannot find Him according to Jeremiah 29 verse 11. Because He said, when you search for me, and you seek after me, not just with your lips, guys, with all of your you shall find me, saith the Lord. So I knew that I have to tarry in the place in prayer until it is not just words from my lips it is not just prayers from my intellect but now my spirit soul and body has become a one corporate cry to the throne of god it's called deep calls unto deep and for 14 days eight hours a day and sometime it would take me about 20 hours a day just in prayer. And in no ways am I trying to say, look how spiritual I am. Because I want to tell you, any man of God is as spiritual as the wives proclaim them to be. Amen? <laughs> so if you want to know how spiritual I am, speak to my wife. Amen? Maybe that's why I didn't bring her this time. No, I'm joking. <laughs> I'm just joking. Calm down. No. But listen to me, beloved saints. I'm happy you guys are smiling because I need you to understand the journey is amazing. Amen? So I don't want you to become this intense people who just don't enjoy life. I love seeking the presence of God, but I also love to have a burger. Amen? I love watching a nice movie and I love to spend time with my kids. But at the same time, I have always maintained a posture of seeking the presence of God. I don't give my life to stuff that most of the young people give themselves over to because I know in order to become a resting place for the Holy Spirit, I have to maintain a place where my heart is tender for His presence. And for 14 days, I did not eat. For 14 days, and listen, I was not fasting. I just did not eat because my spiritual hunger was more than my natural hunger. I was just hungry for God. And I cried out to God day and night, and at times I, I said to God, I said, God, I, I don't want to prophesy. This is not what I'm crying out for. I don't want to call out word of knowledge. I, I'm not even crying out so that you can anoint me to go to the nations. I want to encounter a person. God, I'm not after your hands. I'm after your face. I want to see you and encounter you. Holy Spirit become real to me. At 14 days, heaven was shut. The heavens felt brass. Have you prayed like that? And you like, God, where are you? Are you even listening to what I'm saying? And you're crying out to God and you say, God, your word says that if I draw myself near unto you, that you will draw yourself near unto me. And when you cry out for God, but you feel that God is not saying anything back to you, and that brings a frustration in your life. And I want to tell you something, rather than getting frustrated, as most of the young people that I know, they give up. That's the problem. Most of the people, they give up before a breakthrough. But I prophesy in the name of Jesus that if you do not break up, if you do not break, give up, you're going to have a breakthrough in Jesus' name. Are you with me? You will have a breakthrough. 14 days, I'm in my bedroom. i never forget this cloud, dark cloud. And I never thought that the glory of God would be dark. You know, when the glory of God came down upon Mount Zion, Sinai, it was a dark cloud, the Bible says. And the whole nation was running away from it. This dark cloud entered into my room. It did not feel demonic, but it was the spirit, I call it the spirit of the fear of the Lord that you can read about in Isaiah chapter 11. And I want to tell you something, that there is a reality to the glory of God that we have not yet experienced in the church. 
See, God wants to manifest his presence in an amazing way. But I always say, in order for God to do that, he needs to work a work of holiness in our hearts. He has to prepare the church for revival. That's the only reason God is not coming today is because he doesn't want to have Acts 5 happen again when all of us are dropping dead. Because when you study the book of Acts with every dimension of the glory of God, there was a new dimension of the fear of the Lord released in the church. And the Bible says in Acts 5 that great fear fell upon the church and signs and wonders was done by the hands of the apostle. And no one dared to join them. Are you guys with me? Because you cannot take what is holy as common. And I believe for us to be delivered from the fear of man in the church, we need to have the fear of God. We need to have the fear of God. And I believe and prophesy that in this last day, that God is going to tear down the fear of man because he's going to bring his own fear. The fear of the Lord is going to come upon the last church. And we're going to see an outpouring of his glory. You know what I did? When that fear came into my room, I rebuked it because I thought it was a demon. I was born again for three years. I related to the father as my heavenly father who always hugged me and kissed me and loved me. I related to the grace of Jesus because it was the grace of Jesus Christ who have set me free. But I've never experienced the sight of God. I never experienced the dread of his presence. So I was rebuking it. And as I was rebuking it for 15 minutes, I heard the Spirit of God say this. You can rebuke a demon in the name of Jesus, but you cannot rebuke me. That's what he said. And then I heard him say this. Do not resist the fear of the Lord or the fear of the Lord will consume you. I will say that again. Do not resist the spirit of the fear of the Lord or the spirit of the fear of the Lord will consume you. You will fall on the rock or the rock will fall on you and crush you to pieces. And I knew that I had to surrender. Surrender. And allow the spirit of the fear of the Lord according to Isaiah 11 work in my life. Because when God said, be holy as I am holy, that is not something that you can accomplish to your own strength. It has to be done to the spirit of grace. Are you with me? And i never forget, the next day was a Friday. And I called my fiance and I said, Mariella, the Holy Spirit is going to visit me. She said, how do you know? I said, I know he's going to visit me. Have you ever felt something is about to break loose in your life? You... you, you you cannot explain it. You cannot put words, but you can sense it in your spirit that you're about to have a breakthrough. And she said, how do you know? I said, I just know. That night I cleaned my bedroom. Very beautiful. I really did. I, as, as you're waiting for someone to come, I cleaned up my bedroom because I knew the Holy Spirit's going to come. I was just born again through years. I didn't know he lived inside of me. Amen. And then I went down and lie down on my bed and I just waited. I waited on the Holy Spirit. One hour went by, nothing, two hours. What did Jesus say? Wait, just wait. See, the problem is in the church, we don't know how to wait. We know how to preach, we know how to teach, we know how to pray loud. We don't know how to wait. Wait, for what? Wait until you have received power from on high. Wait until the Holy Spirit comes. Do you know how I do 90% of my prayer time? It's not talking terms, it's waiting terms. I just sit in his presence and I don't say one word. I practice the presence of Jesus. Because his presence can become a form of prayer. Are you guys with me? And so I waited on him. And went past midnight. And about 3 a.m. in the morning, I fell in a deep sleep. A very deep sleep. And I woke up. When that presence, the fear of the Lord, entered into my bedroom again. And please hear me. I believe that as I'm sharing this, that God is going to allow impartation to happen. If you are hungry. If you are not hungry, that's up to you. But I want to tell you something. I believe in impartation. I believe it with all of my heart according to Romans chapter 1 verse 9. Where Paul said, I long that I may come to you, not just preach a message, that I may impart to you some spiritual gifts. 
And that word impartation is that when somebody shares a testimony, you can by grace enter into a realm because not of yourself, but because of the grace of Jesus Christ. Are you guys with me? That's why I don't want to teach. I want to share a testimony with you because I know that some of you have been seeking for God for a long time, but you have grown disappointed. You have grown weary. And some of you, I can see in your face, you're about to give up. But I want to, I'm here to encourage you, do not give up. Do not give in. Many young people have given in and they have turned the other way. I want to tell you, keep on pursuing, even if you have to do it by yourself. Because you will break through. You will come through. Because God is not a man that he should lie. And sometimes for you to have a breakthrough, you need to stand by yourself. Are you with me? And that day for me personally, as I was lying in the presence of Jesus, the sound entered into my room. And the only way I can explain it is a whole forest being on fire. So when the Bible says in Acts chapter 2, there is a sound that came from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind filled the whole house. Now, some people say to me, it says like a sound. I say, I don't care if it sounds like a tractor. The Bible says it was a sound. So stop arguing about what the sound was. It was a sound. For me, it was a sound as the whole forest being on fire. And it filled my whole room. And suddenly, as I sat up in my bed, I could feel the presence and electricity, the ecstasy of the Spirit of God going through my body. And I know this is more than terminology. I know this is beyond theology. This is the reality of a person, and his name is the Holy Spirit. And he desires to come into your life. He doesn't just want to touch the fivefold ministers. He wants to make himself real to every single believer. Because he is not a respecter of people or persons. He want to encounter you this morning. And when I stood up in my bed. I was face to face. I didn't see a form. He's the faceless man. Amen. There's many symbols of the Holy Spirit. But he was standing face to face. And I heard this word. Holy. And he said. Holy. And he said, holy. And I realized that the Holy Spirit is not his name. It's his nature and character. He is not an impure spirit. He is not a familiar spirit. He is a holy, separate spirit. He is the Holy Spirit. And if you want to walk with the Holy Spirit, you have to consecrate your life. Come on, I want to say this again. You have to live a life of holiness if you want to walk with the Holy Spirit. And what is so amazing is that for me, the Holy Spirit is the heart of God. When He gave us something, He gave us not just whatever. He gave us His own heart. The very one that He said, if you grieve Him, I will be grieved. If you blaspheme the Son and the Father, you shall be forgiven. But if you blaspheme the Holy Spirit, you shall not be forgiven in this age or in the age to come. But yet He gave us the Holy Spirit. Amen? To be our comforter, to be our strength, to be our advocate. To be our guide, the one who guides and leads us into all truth. The one who helps you and I to glorify Jesus. So you want to glorify Jesus? Get to know the Holy Spirit. Don't just teach on Him. Desire Him. I'm not the greatest teacher. But I can tell you, I know the Holy Spirit. And when He came into my life, you know what I thought? Oh, I'm going to be like Benny Hinn. You know, his power is for service, but his presence is for knowing. It's for intimacy. And when his presence became real to me, it was all about intimacy. It had nothing to do with ministry. Of course, the more you spend time in the presence of God, the more God anoints you. And the more God anoints you, the more God can use you. Amen? Amen? But the presence and the person that I'm talking about is nothing to do with being the next Todd White. Are you with me? Can I say that again? I love Todd White, but that's not what we have the Holy Spirit. We have the Holy Spirit, number one, to know God, to be sealed until the day of redemption. Number two, so that we can bear witness until the resurrection of Christ. And so on a daily basis, I learned to develop intimacy with this person who has emotions, who have a mind, who have feelings, who have a will. And on a daily basis, I spend time with him. 
No ministry, no preaching, no platform, nobody calling me up. Just me and the Holy Spirit. What did I do? I just told him how much I loved him. You know, I don't care how many books have been written about the Holy Spirit. No one has copyright of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I don't care if he comes in a white suit, a black suit, a green suit. We all have been given the Holy Spirit. So we all have to treasure this precious person, the Holy Spirit. And during this season of my life, I, I start to understand that you cannot have holiness apart from the Holy Spirit. He's the one that sets you apart. Holiness is an anointing that you receive from above. When he said holy to me, he was not saying to me, Kevin, you're living like a heathen and I want you to be holy. When he said holy, I received a revelation of his holiness. And when you receive a revelation of his holiness, you want to be holy as he is holy. Are you with me? The reason people are struggling with the holiness of God is because they don't have a revelation of the holiness and the majesty of God. When you receive a revelation of His holiness, you want to live holy and pure for Him. Because it's not so much about, I'm going to live holy so God can use me. You want to live holy because you want to be well-pleasing unto Him. Romans 12 said, Brother, brethren, now present your body as a living sacrifice. Which is your reasonable use, holy and blameless unto Him. And that's what I did on a daily basis. And I developed an intimacy. Why did I share this? Because if you want to know the presence of Jesus, you have to know the person of the Holy Spirit. If you want to know the reality of the presence of Jesus, you have to encounter the person of the Holy Spirit. Because when we say presence in the church today, many people have different understanding of what the presence is. And so we have a generation now that is talking about the presence, but they never experienced the presence. Are you with me? That's why we have more people leaving the church today than staying in the church. Because we are not presenting the reality, but we're presenting the terminology. And I believe that is changing in Jesus' name. Are you guys with me? Can I have the worship team to come up? I want to minister a little bit. So, going to be a little bit different this morning. But you guys okay with that? I really wanted to give you a systematic teaching today, but I did not. Amen? Because I felt in my heart, I want you to once again desire. <laughs> Just to desire. Because I know as a family in a community, you guys have been seeking the face of God. But I also believe that many of you have stopped pursuing that presence. When